I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. If you watch my channel, then you know that the Runcam Eagle is my favorite FPV camera. But there are some things about the Runcam Eagle that many of you absolutely hate. So we're going to see today whether the Runcam Eagle 2 fixes those things or whether it's just more of the same. Stay tuned. Traditionally, our FPV cameras have been CCD cameras. CCD is the kind of sensor that they are, and uh, it has certain characteristics that make it nice for our cameras. When you look at a camera like a Runcam Swift or an 1177, that's a CCD. CMOS cameras have traditionally been, well, really bad. Uh, and the cheapest cameras made have been CMOS cameras. And it's given CMOS a little bit of a bad name. But actually, if you look at high-end DSLR cameras, they're all using CMOS sensors. And the takeaway from this should be that CMOS doesn't have to be bad, it just has to be done right. The fact that it's usually done cheaply for FPV cameras doesn't mean that it can't be good. And that's how we come to cameras like the Runcam Eagle, which is a CMOS camera, or as many of you will point out, the Foxier Monster, which is also a CMOS camera. And if there was a direct comp competitor in the market for the, Fox, uh, for the Runcam Eagle, it would probably be the Foxier Monster. Now, people are always asking me, when am I going to review a Foxier Monster? And I'm sure I'll get around to it. I really ought to, right? Because I keep talking about the Eagle. But the thing is, the Monster is only available in 16.9. And I don't like flying 16.9 cameras because my goggles are 4.3. And that's a topic for another day. So I just somehow never get around to testing the monster because it's only available in the aspect ratio that I don't really prefer. So we come back to the Eagle, which is a CMOS camera. And the way to make a CMOS camera good is to do fancy image processing on it. And that allows you to do things like the Eagle's wide dynamic range. I'm going to show you some footage, but whether you like the Eagle's footage or hate it, you have to admit that the, the light handling, the dynamic range of the image, the ability to represent bright and dark parts of an image at the same time to get shadow details while at the same time there are bright things in the frame like, oh, I don't know, the sky. It's vastly superior on these cameras like the Eagle and presumably the Monster, and it's where things are going. The image is just better. It doesn't mean that the image is perfect, though. The other problem with the, these cameras, the CMOS sensors and the Eagle and so forth, is that all of that digital image processing adds latency. And the latency on the Eagle was unacceptably high for some people. Personally, I've been flying the Eagle on an FPV or on a freestyle rig for months now, and I never felt like the latency was hampering me. But, you know, I'm not exactly a, a, a ultra high reaction time pilot. I'm often not doing very tight proximity where fast reaction time is necessary. Even for racing, the fastest of reaction time isn't necessarily necessary because a race course is so predictable. And I've often wondered if the fact that I was okay with the Eagle's latency might have something to do with the fact that I'm not, I don't have particularly fast reaction time anyway. So anytime the Eagle's latency might have mattered, I would have crashed anyway. Several pilots whose opinion I really trust, one of them being Final Glide and one of them being Paul Nurkula, have said that they tried the Eagle and the latency was too much. And if they say that, there's certainly something to it. But it was fine for me. It is a fact, though, that the latency on the Eagle 1 was higher. Going to Oscar Lang's uh, latency testing and it's so fantastic that he's doing this. He's got a great method of testing a camera's latency in a very rigorous and, and meaningful way. He shows that the Runcam Eagle has a max of 45.5 milliseconds, an average of 36.0 milliseconds, and a minimum of 27.2 milliseconds. You write all that down. Whereas the Eagle 2 has fixed that problem. The Runcam Eagle 2 has better latency. In fact, the latency on the Eagle 2 is on par with the latency of a Swift. So let's take a look and let's see how the Eagle 2 stacks up against the Eagle in terms of the image. We're looking at the Eagle 2 right now, and if we look at this grass, you can start to see the sort of shimmeriness that we talk about the Eagle having, which many people object to. I'm gonna start playing with the settings and adjust the sharpness to different settings and show you how it changes the image from the camera. Notice the shimmeriness here. That's over sharpening. 
we've also got a sort of a Moyer effect just below the window, those diagonal lines on the boards of my house. Well, suffice it to say, that's not really what my house looks like. That is an artifact of the camera. So we're going to go into Image Enhance and Sharpness, and I'm going to show you the difference. The auto algorithm that it comes with is actually not as aggressive as in the Eagle One. In the Eagle One, auto basically was max. Here with it at max, you can see it's much worse. And I'm going to change it now to zero for edge sharpening. And you can see the difference there. And back to 15. And zero for detail sharpening. And zero for both. Here the image is really soft. Frankly, too soft to really fly with, I think. So I'm going to bump these back up again. And this is about what I fly with on the Eagle One. At about somewhere between four and six on both detail and edge. Which I think gives a good balance of... Not too much shimmeriness, but you can still see the details, although the shimmeriness is still there, and the Moyer distortion, it just never goes away. What about that wide dynamic range algorithm? Well, here's what it looks like with it off. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty freaking amazing. Uh, I just have to let this speak for itself. The ability to resolve shadow detail with bright objects in the sky is unparalleled. There isn't another camera that can do this. And I know a lot of you guys are out there saying, my Swift looks better than that. I don't think it does. I've been testing a bunch of these, and I don't think it does. I think you're fooling yourself. Hey, but uh, you know, oh, I should really edit this part out. That was a little aggressive. <laughs> now we're going to go look at my basement, where by the look of it, I murder broken down motorists who knock on my door in the middle of the night. No, <laughs> the reason we're looking at my basement is that the light sensitivity, the low light sensitivity on the Eagle 2 is much improved compared to the Eagle 1. Now, by default, you can see that when we go into the dark area, the camera transitions to black and white. But many prefer to set the day-night option to color to force it to stay in color. And you can see that when it goes into this low-light mode, it cranks up the gain on the sensor and it gets really noisy, but it's still completely flyable. Uh, I wish you guys could see just how dark this really freaking was. It was really dark. Uh, and you can see that that image there is... You can certainly fly off that image here. We've trans you can see it jump out of that low light mode. If we manually set it to auto, you can see that it'll transition to black and white when it goes into the dark area, which the DVR is having a little bit of a problem with. But of course, that glitching you see there isn't in the goggles. And the, the image looks a little bit less noisy. But some people don't like that transition from black and white to color and back again and prefer to just leave it on color. And for comparison, this is the Eagle One. Again, that glitching is just on the DVR, not in the goggles. And if we compare closely, the Eagle One is just a little less sensitive in this exact same area. It's making out just a little bit less uh, detail. Here, watch as we go in here. Yeah, so the Eagle Two definitely is more sensitive uh, and might even be usable as a twilight camera. Now this segment is for all the people who saw my comparison between the Eagle and the Swift and the 1177 and said that I was misrepresenting the quality of those cameras. This is the Rotoriot Swift, which some people may feel that this is not exactly how they would tune the camera, but I don't think anybody could debate that this is not a well-tuned image. People like Final Glide put their input into how this camera's image settings should be. So you can't blame me, and you can't say that this is not a good representation of the Swift's image quality. And I don't think this is a bad-looking image. Uh, and I've intentionally chosen difficult lighting conditions for the camera. Uh, but if you look, for example, at the side of the house, there's no detail in the side of the house. It's kind of just one dark brown blotch. You can't really see any of the boards or anything. The resolution is definitely lower in this camera. And if you look at the trees, for example, you can't see any details in the leaves. They've just become one dark sort of blotch. And, and that, I think, is my biggest criticism of this camera. If we compare that here with the Eagle 2, we still have the digital distortion, granted. But overall, I feel like this is just clearly a superior image. There's additional resolution. We can see the details in the side of the house. And shadow details are better, uh, especially here where the sky is in view. We can still see the leaves on the trees. The exposure algorithm does a better job here of adjusting to show the, tree, the, the sh details in the leaves. And here the tree is not lost in shadow. I really just feel that this is a superior image, except for the digital distortion, but on the whole, better. So here's how I would sum up this camera. If you liked the image from the Eagle One, but you didn't like the latency, 
don't hesitate. The Eagle 2 is the camera for you. The latency on the Eagle 2 is on par with a Swift or any other CCD camera that you might be used to. If you didn't like the, the digital image distortion in the Eagle 1, that shimmeriness and the Moir pattern, the Eagle 2 does not fix that. The default settings on the Eagle 2 are a little less aggressive than on the Eagle 1, but I think you should turn the sharpening down on both of the cameras way down, and, and even still, there's some of that. So if you just hate that look, then this is not the camera for you. Finally, you may just like the image that a CCD camera puts out. The image from the CCD camera is more contrast. Now that directly equates to less shadow detail. The wide dynamic range image from the Eagle 2 inherently is less contrasty. The colors look a little bit more washed out, but there's more detail there. And for me, I think I prefer to be, see what's in those details. But under the right lighting conditions and under the right flight conditions, the more contrasty, more colorful image is going to, it's certainly going to look better. Uh, and maybe, maybe that's what you prefer. Hope that's helped you make a decision as to whether this is the kind of camera you want to get. Thanks for watching. And as always, happy flying.